eight remaining home cooks have been stranded in the wilderness for an epic team challenge that will test both their culinary creativity and resourcefulness. I have no idea where I am. I don't walk or hike for fun. That's not fun to me. That's like torture. Welcome, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. To the absolute middle of nowhere. Throughout this competition, we have seen you cook with some of the finest ingredients available anywhere in the world. And you've worked in all sorts of amazing kitchens. And there's none better than the luxury of the MasterChef kitchen. But we need you to show us that you can cook anywhere and with anything. That's why we brought you out here. For this challenge, tomorrow, you'll be serving us a delicious gourmet dish created out of the ingredients in those survival cases. And you will all be spending the night here in this beautiful wilderness. In these boxes, each team has only the bare essentials. One camping knife, a flint for starting your fires, a cast iron skillet, and a wooden spoon. With these very limited tools, plus the absolute basics in terms of ingredients, you must make us a world-class restaurant quality dish. Three, Natasha, you two had the best dishes in the last elimination challenge. You are team captains. It would definitely be exciting to win this challenge because it would prove to everyone that I do know what I'm doing and that I'm not just the underdog, I'm not just the vegetarian. I grew up in South Africa. We had lots of land. Uh, I had three older brothers, so I'm a tomboy at heart. I'm not afraid of the wilderness. Bree, you had the best dish, so you get the first pick. My first choice is going to be someone that I know will be comfortable outside in the wilderness. So my first choice is James. James, wow. I grew up camping. My dad took me hunting, fishing so many times when I was a kid. This is my backyard. I know this. Natasha. Jordan, you're going to be on my team, buddy. Jordan. My second pick is Eddie. Eddie, wow. <laughs> Eddie, let's go, big boy. I trust this person's palate, so I would like Jesse to be on my team. Wow. Jesse, let's go. Welcome to the blue team. We are down to the last two picks. This is familiar territory for you again, Chrissy. Are you surprised this time? I'm always last pick. I, whatever. Whose team do you want to be on now? Natasha's. And why not Brie? Because I hate Brie. Oh. <laughs> Stop it. Wow. I don't like the idea of having a vegetarian captain my team. I would like to finish my team with Luca. What a shock, eh? Thank you. Two team captains, please go and join your respective teams. Thank you. Hey, guys. Ciao. Everybody happy? Yes, yes chef. chef. Unfortunately, the wilderness does have one similarity to the kitchens of a four-star restaurant. Nothing is ever predictable. In the restaurant business, people get fired every day. Head chefs come and go. You have to be able to work with everybody. So that's why we now are going to change the two team captains and switch teams. <laughs> You're really going to leave me all night with her? We're switching captains after Chrissy announced to America how much she hates me. I have to deal with the beast. OK, guys. Inside those survival cases are two different animal proteins that you could find out here. In one case, you have three rabbits. And in the other case, six pigeons. Bree, since you had the best dish in the last challenge, you and your team now get the choice of which protein you want to cook with. I've cleaned rabbits before. They're a lot easier to clean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Everyone comfortable? Yeah. All right. We have chosen three rabbits. So, Natasha, that means that you and your team will have the pigeons. Right now, it's the survival of the fittest. Good luck. Good luck. Stay safe and stay warm. To the trenches! Do this. With limited daylight remaining, the teams must start planning tomorrow's gourmet dishes. With no electricity, no running water, and no kitchen appliances, the home cooks must create a world-class restaurant-quality dish 
made from the most basic of provisions. Potatoes, quail eggs, we got some carrots. This is all the oil we're working with. That's it? Yep. Check it out. Yeah, they're small, dude. Yeah. They're small. Going through the big metal box, we have some vegetables. We have spices. Just got the bare necessities, actually. All right, guys, we need to figure out what we're going to do here. Somehow, we're going to have to pull out a Michelin star dish with a pocket knife and peppercorns. So we got some work cut out for us. We got the innards, too. What do we have to cook with? We have a cast iron pan. We have some empty coffee cans that we can cook in. And that's pretty much it. This is a desperate challenge. We are expecting something incredible tomorrow. They have the most basic of necessities yeah. here. A hind quarter would almost would be, be enough. And then we could make stock overnight tonight with the other stuff. Yeah. I'm looking for sauces technique. I want a restaurant quality dish in the wilderness. Split them in half and grill them. Tough one, Pigeon, because that is the most unforgiving protein anywhere in the world because it goes rubbery uh, within seconds. Right. How do y'all want to serve it to them? Do you want to do like a split? In the blue team, well, they know how to cook that rabbit as delicate as we would in terms of how unforgiving it is. No fat, very lean, mm -hmm. and goes dry instantly. Yeah. It's really big, so we should definitely section it out. With their camp set up, blue team Captain Bree has a radical idea for their gourmet dish. Here's what I was thinking. We could do a braised rabbit. And we have flour, right? Mm-hmm. We, we could make pasta. Do we have eggs? I could definitely we have quail make eggs. pasta. That shows some balls. Yeah, it does. Making fresh pasta out here in the elements, hello. Yeah. While the blue team starts immediately prepping vegetables for a stock, the red team is struggling to come up with a high-end concept for their pigeon dish. What were we thinking about the bird? Maybe we can do like a dry rub and let it sit overnight. Hmm. We could do a yuca puree. Look, we got to keep it light. A yuca puree will be light. Living in the dirt and gourmet does not go hand in hand. Nothing about this area that we're in says gourmet. And it's definitely giving us a little trouble. Where's the sauce coming to play? Do we even need the sauce anymore? We definitely going to need a sauce. We definitely don't have the Master Chef Kitchen backing us up in this one. We have nothing to work with. You guys, we need to figure it out. Night falls on the camps, but there is no time for rest. The blue team is busy butchering one of their rabbits and prepping vegetables when Gordon arrives to assess their progress. Hi, guys. Hi, Chef. Right, what are we up to? We're going to do a rabbit ragu, and we're going to serve it over fresh pasta. You're making pasta? Yes, yeah. we are. Whose idea was the pasta? Cool. It was mine. Wow. Yeah. So no knives, no boards. How are you improvising? We got wine bottles to roll it out. We're yeah. good to go. Yeah. Uh, bloody ambitious. And you pull it off? Fantastic. Thank, Thank you, Chef. Chef. Good night, guys. Enjoy Bye. your night. While Blue Team's rabbit prep is well underway, the Red Team is test roasting one of their pigeons. Hey, guys. Hey. Hey. What's up, brother? What dish are you going to serve us tomorrow? Um... Not, yeah, not all at once. No, honestly, we're still kind of working on it right now. We, we, we took apart the pigeon, and we wanted to see how we could aesthetically put it in front of you guys, which is a, a nice, elegant way. We definitely don't know what we want to do, and the judges are here, and it's, it's actually embarrassing. The thing that you really need to come up with, I'm sure Joe agrees, is what the hell the dish is. Yep. Good luck. Thank Thanks. Much. Thanks, Joe. We're running out of time. We really need to put our foot down and think about something solid that we're going to put on the plate. And if we don't, then we're going to be in a pressure test. In this grueling Master Chef team challenge, resourcefulness is key. Our eight home cooks must use their culinary skills to create a world class restaurant quality dish using just the very basic provisions in their survival boxes. This is a tough challenge because we need to make a restaurant quality dish, but we don't have the equipment of a restaurant. We don't even have the tools. After a night of indecision, Natasha's red team has finally decided on a plan for their pigeon. We're gonna do a slow roasted pigeon over the spit. We're gonna do a farro with wild mushrooms and baby glazed carrots. How's it taste now? Oh no, it tastes like minerally. James is working on the sauce. 
Luca is taking apart the pigeons, deboning them and making sure that they're pretty, and Eddie's helping him with that. And I'm kind of just overseeing things that are going on. I mean, it's getting there. Maybe we add a little honey? While the red team is finally on track, the blue team is now beginning to falter. Can you hit the mushrooms with a, um, a little bit of the stock? Yeah. Rather than oil? I wanted to start the braise earlier than we did, but we only have one saute pan, and Bree wants to utilize the saute pan for the mushrooms right now. We gotta get this rabbit on yeah. soon. So we'll take the mushrooms out now. I don't know what happened from when we woke up and then the whole like next hour, what we were doing. Things are getting pushed back further. The emphasis on the rabbit just isn't there. Damn, I hope that we're kind of close with this rabbit. Christy, do you want to get started on the pasta? I'm going to have to make it when we're 45 minutes to go. Uh, I can't rest it inside anything, so. Well, we could rest it in the tinfoil. No, the tinfoil will react with the Really? Movies. Yeah. I really try to motivate my team to get everyone moving. There's not much we can do with the rabbit because it's braising. It just needs to cook. I'm a little concerned about the pasta, but I'm still going to trust Chrissy and hope that she can get it done. Good morning, good morning. With service time quickly approaching, Gordon checks in with the red team to hear how they plan on cooking the pigeon. Are you confident the fact that the way you're cooking them is the best way? Absolutely. Yeah? Yes. We tried two last, last night. night. It was pulling off the bone. And it's definitely a gourmet pigeon dish. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Get going, guys. Yeah, go good go. luck. You got it. Right. The red team presses ahead with their menu as planned, while on the blue team, Joe and Graham are concerned with the braised rabbit. Wow. Is that going to braise off in an hour? Uh, it's been on for... It's been on for close to an yeah, hour. So for yeah, for a while. It's an good. hour now. You could have braised it last night, let it cool, and warmed it up. Like, the longer it has to rest, the better it is with braising. Good luck. Thank, Thank you. you. Chrissy, can you get started on the pasta? Yeah. Making pasta in the wilderness is so hard. We are banging out pasta with quail eggs, which are, like, the size of a thumbnail. Plus, we're rolling it out with a wine bottle. So I'm just hoping that it's going to come out OK. I think we're gonna kick some ass today. So the blue team just started braising the rabbit an hour ago. Like, it's gonna take three hours to braise. Exactly. You can't fast forward the cooking of a rabbit. The pasta was a good idea. Maybe the pasta could help save them. Just good. keep going. Keep you gotta, going you gotta, and you gotta get like, the... fly. I'm a little concerned about time. The big worry for me and the red team is they're gonna start spit roasting the pigeon. They think it's gonna be tender enough to spit roast. Yep. Pigeon wants to be medium rare. Yeah. Can they get it there? How are you feeling about the bird? Yeah, right now I'm just making sure that the, the pigeon is, is cooked. I don't want to overcook it. What do you think is going to happen, red team or blue team? Uh, right now, for me, I'm hoping the blue team will pull this back. But we know cooking pigeon is far more difficult than it is cooking rabbit. So mm -hmm. right now, I'm going to sit on the fence. It's neck and neck for me. Mm -hmm. I'm going to finish them in the pan, like searing. OK. I'm stuck. The rabbit's a little chewy. Pull it off the bone and keep cooking it. Make sure it's cooked. That is the most important thing, over presentation. I think that it's more important to make sure that the rabbit is fully cooked. So I decide that we just need to take the rabbit off, shred it off the bone a little bit. The pasta is simply an accompaniment to the rabbit. As long as the rabbit is money, we're good. The rabbit is going to be cutting it close. Five minutes, guys. Okay. Beautiful. You hold the pasta back with the fork. Pour. You're good. Pour. You're good. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Two minutes, guys. OK, OK, OK. okay. Take this one's done. Go plate it. Be yeah. careful. Be careful. Be yeah. careful. Come on, guys. We have like one minute. Pick up the pace. Where's the sauce? Inside here. Relax. It's one minute. Relax. 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 Please. Not... Luca's freaking out. We've got one minute left. If anything, he's making it worse. Body Where's the sauce? Inside that box. Put the mushrooms on. I'm going to get the flowers. Quickly, really quickly. All three plates are done. We're just trying to get mushrooms on the plate and put the flowers on top. They look beautiful. OK, we're good. We're good. <gasps> and then I drop one. All over my leg. We got this. With 30 seconds left before the teams will present their dishes to the judges, Blue Team Captain Bree 
makes a huge mistake. <gasps> All over my leg. Smaller portions. We'll just put more Smaller on that plate. I don't even have time to panic. So we take from the two other plates and we try to even them out. It's all right, guys. Put this on this. Three seconds to go. There's still gunk on the plate, and we're really trying to wipe everything off and make it look beautiful. Where's the mushrooms? Done. It's okay. You don't look too happy. It was oh, my fault. Right. I'm sorry, guys. It's all right. Our future, our hard work, everything. Lying in the dirt right now. Let's get the show on the road, people. Come on. I am so proud of our dish. I think the dish looks great. I think it looks absolutely marvelous. Good to see you guys. We're excited. OK, blue team, is that your dishes? Let's go. Wow. Wow. Brie, Captain of the Blue Team, describe your dish, please. We have a braised rabbit ragu served with pan-seared wild mushrooms served over a quail's egg pasta. Mm -hmm. Wow. What do you think of the pasta? Considering it was made in the wilderness, I'm impressed to have any pasta at all on the plate right now, quite frankly. Never in my life camping have I thought of or experienced fresh homemade pasta. And it's actually quite good. Yeah. The rabbit for me is tender. The mushrooms are sauteed beautifully. Mm -hmm. And what I need here is a touch more seasoning. Pasta could have done with a bit more seasoning. Rabbit's delicious. I can't believe you got it that delicate and that tender in that short period of time. If we were in Tuscany, Tuscany. in a hillside town yeah. where they'd cook and braise rabbit like this, you yep. wouldn't be far off the mark. Bloody good effort. Really good effort. Good job. I can't believe that we had this insane, miraculous recovery. And the judges love it. Red team, please present your dish. Thank you. Let's go. Wow. Uh, visually, that looks stunning. Natasha, Captain of the Red Team, describe your dish, please. We have a slow roasted pigeon, and then we finished it off in the pan, and then we've got a farro. It's got mushrooms in there, and then we have some honey glazed carrots. Um, who cooked the pigeon? Uh, I did. Yeah, let me tell you something. Perfect. Absolutely phenomenal. Delicious. Crispy on the outside, pink in the middle, and so tender. You nailed it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's on the money. Very impressive. I would have loved to have seen uh, a bit more cook on the carrots. Carrots are crunchy, however. Good job, red team. Seriously, well done. Both teams, blue team and red team. Um, really smart, delicious dishes that we didn't expect. But the wilderness, up against all odds, really well done. Well done. Good job, guys. Uh, thank you, chef. Thank you. We now have a lot of discussion to nail one of these dishes as the winner of this challenge. Please go back to your camps and look out for a smoke signal. You see a blue smoke, congratulations. Blue team, you've won the challenge. Red team, if that smoke is red, congratulations, you have won. You know the losing team will face the dreaded pressure test. Natasha, I'd like you to take that back to your camp for you to dissect and taste the blue team's effort. And blue team, I'd like you to taste that pigeon Take it back and dissect and understand what you're up against. Walking away from the judges, I'm not worried whatsoever. I think our team did awesome. You think it was a smart idea to make pasta? I don't think so. You see how thick it is? Actually, the pasta's not bad. The rabbit's decent cook on it. It's not bad. It's I mean, just... it's just done. It's not like it's, like, it's juicy. It's, it's not, not falling right? apart. Yep. No. So if I see blue smoke over there, I'm going to be really confused. I don't think it's better than ours. I hate to say that I do. But Maybe just their pigeon. Yeah, I protein. Pigeon, protein wise. The dish as a whole. Ours, but the dish is a whole. The dish ours. as a whole. Ours is way better. But their star is better. They cooked the pigeon perfectly, but what did they do outside the box? Nothing. We should win because we took a chance. We made pasta in the middle of nowhere. I'm just hoping that the judges are thinking the same way I'm thinking. That was amazing food. Let's get one thing right. Two gourmet restaurant quality dishes. Absolute wow factor. Joe, where are you going, red or blue? I think it'd be hard to deny that pigeon. They nailed it. To pull that dish off in the wilderness for the blue team, it was almost impossible. 
yeah, to braise, to make pasta, and then to do all that to those vegetables. So I think the blue team had more heart on the plate than the red team. It had more soul, for sure. So more soul. Yeah. And the red team looked more fancy than the blue team, but I'm with the blue. So, Joe, you're red. I'm red. I'm blue. Graham, it's down to you. What direction is this smoke signal supposed to come from? I don't know. I want to win so badly. I want to be able to prove to everyone that I can be a good team captain. This would definitely be a painful challenge to lose. Great job. It wasn't the team I picked, but I'm sure glad that I ended up on it. Bummer, y'all. Yeah. Yeah, we did our best, and I think we did a pretty yeah, good we, job. Yeah, we made a Great. really valiant effort. It's my first challenge as a team captain, and I failed my team. It just sucks to know that it's on your shoulders. Now what? So pressure test. <laughs> That's a first. I've never had to do one. I'm the only one who hasn't had to go to a pressure test so far. So this scares the crap out of me. <sighs> Unfortunately, Bree, your team lost the survival challenge, and you will now have to face a pressure test. But not all of you will have to compete. One of you gets to go up to the gallery and be safe from elimination. But thankfully, we are not the ones that have to decide. They are. Yes, the red team. You will be deciding who from the blue team is safe from elimination. We have never, ever placed so much power in the hands of the winning team. Your decision tonight may well have a huge impact on who wins this year's MasterChef. Got it? Yes, Chef. Yes, Chef. We have the ability to decide the fate of someone and the direction of where this competition is going to go after this. We need to think this through. The two down there that we're worried about are Jordan and Jesse. Without a doubt. I think we should save Chrissy. Because here's the thing. If we leave Jesse, Jordan, and Bree, they're all three strong. I actually think we should save Bree because I know that we can all beat Brie. I'm really worried about Brie. I think that she's extremely smart with her flavor components and her vegetables. She can't taste meat. It doesn't matter. She's it, gotten it, this far. It mattered yesterday. She's gotten it mattered this yesterday, far. though. Luca, who do you go with? I think that strategically we should, we should save Chrissy. Chrissy? We need to save Chrissy because everybody feels that we can beat Chrissy. It's on you. We've all made our vote. Remember, it has to be a group decision. This is really difficult. <clears throat> Time's up, guys. OK, red team. Who from the blue team will be safe from elimination and joining you in the gallery? Please tell us. It's going to be Chrissy. Uh, Chrissy, how do you feel? I think that the reason that I'm going up there is because they know that I'm going to kick ass either way, and they want those three going before me. They know I'm going to win. Chrissy doesn't get it. She doesn't get that we think that we can all knock her out. We look at her as she's the weakest person. Chrissy, you are now safe from this pressure test. Make your way up to the gallery. I am shocked, simply because I know they all hate Chrissy, and I can't believe they want to keep her in the competition. The three of you still standing here will now all compete in the dreaded pressure test. At least one of you will be leaving the MasterChef kitchen tonight. Are you ready to find out what you are going to have to cook to make it one step further in this competition? It's a mouthgasm of epic proportions. A chocolate eclair. Perfectly cooked, lighter-than-air pastry, filled 
with a delicious Chantilly cream, delicately finished with a beautiful layer of chocolate. That's right, a stunning, delicious eclair. This is a very technical, very difficult challenge. Jordan's a great cook, but he's not a baker at all, so he's going to struggle really bad. You have 60 minutes to make as stunning eclairs. This could be your last 60 minutes in the MasterChef kitchen. Bree has bad time management, honestly. She will definitely have a chance of going home. Please head to your stations. Jessie is very organized. She has a plan in her head, and boom, 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 she's doing everything. She will be safe. In front of you, you have all of the ingredients necessary to create stunning eclairs. Oh, one more thing. You're not making one eclair. You're making six. Everybody ready? Your 60 minutes starts now. Stage one, making the pâte de choux, the choux pastry. Right. Once you've made that roux and you've got the milk, the butter and the flour, you've cooked it out, you've then got to incorporate those eggs. If the eggs aren't folded in and whipped in, and there's not that even distribution of those eggs, they won't rise. Right. The pastry doesn't rise. This challenge is over before it even began. Look how fast Jessie is right now. Jessie's here to win. Yeah. She's here to play. What makes a good Chantilly cream? It's got to be slightly creamy, a touch of sugar. But you've got to get that balance right because of the chocolate topping. So if the chocolate is obviously sweet, right. the glaze, and then you've got the Chantilly too sweet, you've got this mouthful of right. sugar, sugar that's just, yeah. you know, unedible. Right, Jessie, how are you feeling? Good. Um, you've never been in one of these before. I know, I've avoided it like the plague. What's going to separate you from the two standing in front of you to make sure you don't go home? I hope I just get the technical part right and I've made enough extra that if something goes wrong, I can use one of those. I love that girl to death, but I hope she makes a big mistake and eliminates herself today. Hi, Brie. Hi, Chef. So, have you made eclairs before? I've made them once before. Okay. And they came out great that one time, so as long as I can do them well again, then they'll be fine. Just keep an eye on that clock. I will. Hi, right, Jordan. How are you feeling? Uh, I'm feeling the pressure. How many are you making? Uh, I'm doing six, but I have a little extra. I'm going to throw them in, but I just want to get the first six in right now. How long are you cooking them for? 30 minutes, uh, 15 on 400 and 15 on 350. Good luck. They've got to get that pastry in the oven. They're big eclairs. They need a minimum 30 minutes to cook. Come on, please. All your shoe pastry should be in that oven. Bree looks very composed. She's very self-aware here, too. Yes. She knows the time is the issue. Jessie, also a very technical cook. She yes. seems to really be in her element. I'm really looking forward to seeing her eclairs. The one that I'm seriously worried about is Jordan. He had so much air in his piping bag. Jordan sort of looked slightly clumsy. Jordan is looking at her. He's dead. I mean, I think the girls are naming it. Bree is moving faster than Jordan. There's a good chance I could be gone today. Exactly. 45 minutes gone. You've now got 15 minutes to go. I pull my pastry out. I've done everything I could possibly do to do it correctly. And I feel like I'm getting enough cream in, but you've only got like a two inch nozzle. So I don't know how to get it in the middle. So that's the part I'm worried about. Oh, mine are still moist inside. But I gotta pull them if I want them to be done. My chew pastry get into the oven a little bit late, so I'm a little bit nervous for time. I pull them out of the oven, and I can see that they're not as done as I want them to be, and I still have to cool down my chew pastry. If I don't cool them in time, my filling is gonna turn into complete mush. I'm just really nervous now. Freeze eclairs are all uneven, they're flat. They just look like crap. I want Bree to go home. I mean, how could she not be going home? In this pressure test, each home cook must make six perfect eclairs in 60 minutes or face elimination from the Master Chef kitchen. Last five minutes. Jordan is dipping them in the chocolate before he's filled them with the cream. Well, they'll get all messy when you start filling them. I'm really worried about Brie. She's still filling. Come on, Brie, get some chocolate on those. 
Marie's probably never moved this fast in her life. <laughs> gently, gently, gently. Come on, guys, let's go. Come on. 15 seconds to go, guys. Look at Bree, she's gonna pull it out in the last seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and stop. Well done. Seriously, well done. Okay, all of you, very carefully, bring your tray of stunning eclairs down to the front, please. Thank you. I'm very surprised about who's in the bottom because for me, they're actually in the top of the competition. We are going to lose somebody big today. Right. Bring. So visually, they look flat. And where's the cream? They should be filled. Yeah, I know they should be filled. That's not last. But uh, for lack of time, I didn't fill them as well as I had intended to. Finally, some cream. Pastry in the cooked. As you know, that's why they've uh, gone flat. It's lacking four or five minutes more in the oven. The cream is almost sort of melted because obviously they were hot when you tried to pipe. Chocolate ganache, nice, even though you've slightly overheated the chocolate. Okay. The unfortunate thing is it needs more filling and more cooking time. Yes, Chef. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. They don't all look the same. They don't. No. Consistency's not really my forte. Oh, it's falling apart. It's undercooked. It's pretty flat, almost flaccid. Mm -hmm. And there's no filling. The chocolate has a nice shine to it, visually lacking, not consistent across the board. So, thank you. Thanks, Chef. You can see that it's raw without even tasting it now. Okay. Does this one have any filling in it at all? I did my best to, to fill them in time. Sodden. It's completely raw. Jordan. They consistently do look the same, pretty much the same size. Mm -hmm. It's holding more than Breeze did, which is good. Kind of cut lengthwise so I can see the filling, the consistency, and the cook. I think the filling is a little on the sweet end. Yeah. With the chocolate and the actual pastry, it's kind of sugary. Yeah, but I agree. given the huge task that you had, you almost pulled it off. Thank you, Chef. Okay. Obviously, you piped them when they're still hot. Yes, indeed. Hence the reason why they're still liquid. Crust is nice. Chocolate's got a lovely glaze on there. Um, it's very, very sweet. Yeah. That's the secret about putting that salt into the mix. It's a little bit more forgiving then. I mean, this was definitely a pressure test, wasn't it? Yeah. I agree. Yeah. So I'm the very last person. I'm thinking, Jordan's looks the best. Breeze are funky shaped. None of them are matching. I'm not too stoked about my eclairs, but I'm just hoping that there's going to be cream in the very middle. That's the part I'm worried about. First ever pressure test? Yes. Kind of flat. Really wanted to see the more round. And you piped in the, the cream from the sides? From the two ends. From the ends. Yes, the ends. And you think you got it consistently all the way through? I'm hoping. I'm worried about the very middle. Did it reach? No. Nope. 
the pastry, at least it's cooked through, which is not what Brie had. It's still raw. Chocolate's very um, bitter. Is that a stylistic decision? If I were smart enough to put sugar in it, could have fixed it. So, what went wrong? Why are they all split down the middle? I have no idea what causes that. Let me tell you why. So, incorporating the eggs uh, done badly. So, the mix is separated. They're all cracked. How can you stuff them? The stuffing did stay inside of them. But look, um, how much chantilly do you get inside? I have no idea until you open You've got it. no idea. There's nothing in there. And there's nothing in there. Yeah, I don't think it came to the very middle. And there's nothing in there. 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 Where's the filling? On the ends. On the, the ends. Two fits. So let's go back to the ends. Okay, bingo. Not one of them has got any of the chantilly anywhere in the middle. Here's the downside. Your first ever pressure test. I think it screwed you. Big time. Shocking. There's nothing in there. And there's nothing in there. And there's nothing in there. And there's nothing in there. Where's the filling? Your first ever pressure test. I think it screwed you. Big time. Shocking. OK, we've got some very tough decisions to make. Please, give us some time. Thank you. There are some tough competitors here. But my hopes is that we lose Jordan, because down there is the strongest one. None of them are perfect, but Jordan's at least have that pastry outside yeah. that's a little crisper. Jesse's and Bree's, you know, they both had a lot of defects. If I want to win MasterChef, Jesse has to go home, and she's my biggest competition right now. Breeze flat. Mm -hmm. Jesse's, I mean, that chocolate was terrible. At least it's cooked through. Breeze, they were raw. Disgusting. I'm tired of Bree. She's not a good cook, so I want that bitch to go home so bad. This is called a pressure test for a reason. That was very difficult for any professional chef, let alone three amateurs. Jordan, step forward. Thankfully for you, we found yours to be the best out of the three. Please take your apron off and join the rest on the gallery. I definitely have nine lives, and I've expended about six of them, so hopefully I don't have to use any more. Jesse, honestly, Joe, Graham, and myself thought that you were a strong contender for the top three in MasterChef, as did much of your competition. But you know, big names fall in pressure tests. Jesse, please, take your apron off. Say goodbye. Because you are safe, go upstairs. Breeze, just slightly worse. The dough is undercooked. Brie, an amazing performance. Your passion, your enthusiasm, your attitude to every second during this competition is extraordinary. <laughs> We've seen you shine. You have an infectious passion. You know, I think that this is your future. And I'm super excited to see what you do. My mom told me not to cry, so I'm trying not to. Come and say goodbye. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure knowing you. Thank you. Good luck. Mm. <laughs> Thank you. We're going to miss you. Thank you. I never thought I'd say that to a vegetarian. <laughs> oh, my God. Last words for Chrissy? <laughs> Good luck, dude. <laughs> <laughs> well done, honey. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Bye, Bye Bree. Bye, Bree. I'll come visit you in Lancaster. <laughs> I really wanted to prove to everyone out there that just because I'm a vegetarian, it does not and will not stop me from becoming a chef. <laughs> Master Chef has changed my life completely. Brie. Well done. I feel like I learned so much. Good dish, Brie. 
I'm impressed. Thank you. It's wonderful. Congratulations. Thank Great you. job. The hardest part is definitely realizing that you have to say goodbye. Next week on MasterChef. Oh That's right, your family's. It's a mystery box packed full with emotion. Cook a dish inspired by your loved ones. Best mystery box ever. And then, Switch. a frantic tag team challenge pushes the home cooks to their limit. Use your hands. Where's the, where's the, where's the, take it off. Don't ask me, just do it. Come on. I would rather do this by myself. As another top contender. There's no room to mess up. Says goodbye to the MasterChef kitchen. I hand this to you right now. Will you eat it? One potato, two potato.